Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Dr. Keitha Story Stevenson. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. I want to welcome you to Indie Beacon Radio. I'm Dr. Keitha. I'm proud tonight to be with Miss Kimberly Fish. She is a Texas author. We want to talk about some of her new and exciting pro uh, prospects and things she's been doing. Uh, she's been a professional writer in marketing and in, in media for over 30 years, and she has contributed to her newspapers, her columns, and is the author of four books. Uh, that's what we want to get into the meat of that. She enjoys also speaking and sharing her information with groups of, of volunteers, groups that represent her community. And so I'm very proud and very honored to have her in this place. She has served on the board of directors for many organizations. She and her husband, Dr. Mel Fish, uh, reside in Longview, Texas, and they're the proud, proud parents of two grown children. So we've got the children out of the house and now the books are being born. So we're really excited. So she writes with mystery and history and heart and she gives you everyday vacations in her writing. So welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Keith. I'm happy to be here. Looking forward to uh, talking with your listeners tonight. We are very excited to know that you are you are a producing author in Texas, and we're going to try not only to talk about your books, but about your process. So first off, could we start by you telling us a little bit about your background as a writer? Absolutely. I'm happy to do that. I've been a freelance writer for about 30 years and mostly working here in the Longview area in the last 20 years. And it was in the process of doing a writing project for the Longview Chamber of Commerce that I stumbled onto two really dynamic World War II projects that were too significant, too war winning to leave into the dusty archives of the uh, history folders. So I took the uh, avenue of historical fiction and feeling like that was an appropriate way to retell these stories and cast them uh, in the modern pace that we're used to reading and enjoying and uh, kind of revealing not only what Longview was like in the 1940s, uh, but also telling the story of some very brave and courageous um, women that were involved in the Office of Strategic Services, which was the spy network that Roosevelt created uh, during World War II. So thankfully, uh, having time and opportunity to take real history and converting it to uh, historical fiction um, worked out really well. <laughs> I, um, I was able to kind of tell the story back to the folks who from this area, but it's gone so much farther than that. Um, and I'm just in a really interesting note. Uh, last weekend, I had the privilege of being part of a panel discussion with our Gregg County Historical Museum and the East Texas Oil Museum, uh, doing a, a very proud retrospective of, of the Big Inch Pipeline Project, uh, which was one of those two projects. And uh, we had a standing room only crowd to come out and hear about the real history, um, as well as getting to talk about my affectionate take on it. So I, I've had a lot of opportunities to write in various venues. Um, I recently, uh, did the sesquicentennial magazine for Longview. Uh, it debuted last night at a, an event here, and I wrote all the features for that, uh, trying to encapsulate 150 years of local story uh, and doing justice to the people who lived uh, and did amazing things uh, in this very compl complicated history of this town that has gone from an agricultural community to a transportation community with the advent of the train then got flipped on its head with the oil industry and, uh, and then kind of rode out all the various bumps um, with that. So I've, it's just been a really great opportunity for me to connect with people in my community in this East Texas region and uh, learn a lot of interesting details uh, that I believe are, are unique to the fabric of this community and are worth retelling. They're, they're telling the story of who we are, where we came from. Can, and that brings me to the thought, you use a phrase that you, well, just explain this phrase for me, understanding the value of our collective story. I found that fascinating. Yeah, it's a really powerful thing when uh, people come together, their voices kind of uh, tap into um, what the story is of the area and knowing 
not only our history, but each other's lives and putting value on those very varied voices that speak into that story and giving honor and respect. Um, so many times in, in the stories of our communities, particularly those that, that predate uh, the Civil War, we find that there are those who have a voice and then those that don't. And it's hard to put weight on one group or another, but the truth is it all speaks um, into the, our collective strength and, and where, how we got to the place where we are today. And I find a lot of value in that. And thankfully, um, there are still uh, people who can step away from their blue screens long enough uh, to talk about some of those dusty files and stories and, and review the old newspapers and listen to the old timers talk and um, give honor to, to those that have lived big lives. As a former educator, I enjoy watching children light up when they learn something from the past that no one has ever shared with them. And this is writing a historical piece is opening that door for, for that to happen as they grow and mature and as their parents remember back when and grandparents remember back when. Uh, what prompted you to become a writer? Well, like, like, like you, I'm sure, um, this was just something innate into who I was. I've, as a young child, I, I was um, privileged to spend a lot of time in the library and, and fell in love with storytelling um, and just the, the beauty of words uh, as a communication tool. And uh, through college, I, I earned a degree in filmmaking, um, minored in creative writing. And since that time, I've always been uh, working in the marketing and uh, media fields. And then when my husband and I moved here uh, to East Texas, um, I really moved more into a freelance writing role. It gave me a lot more flexibility with my family life and connected me into my community um, where I learned so many interesting things about people um, that, that you pass and you, and you really never take the time to slow down and hear from. And so I'm one of those uh, very fortunate folks who've um, heard a lot of stories and enjoy finding a way to retell them. Well, you mentioned your husband, who, and I'm sure he's part of your support team, but who makes up your support team as a writer? One of the uh, beautiful ways I was able to connect with other writers uh, here in Longview was through a local bookstore. I mean, what, does, what brings us together better than those bookstores where people who creatively love to, to delve into story kind of gravitate to? And, and it was through that that I met um, some other writers who had a writer's group uh, going. And that was really my first experience with the value of a creative team through critiquing, through sharing each other's work, uh, not only getting uh, affirmation from my writing, but be able to share that with others and uh, learn that really delicate process of crafting an art. So that was a big part of my support team. And then um, and actually one of the writers that I worked with in those early years, she's still one of my go-to beta readers every time I, I bring a story out and, and I, I can't go very far without getting her input into things. And then I've been really fortunate to have the same uh, cover designer from the very beginning. Um, she's a local graphic artist with a company that I do a lot of freelance writing for. And she has just been really involved in this storytelling process with me from the very beginning. So you'll see behind me some framed copies of the covers of my books. And I'm happy to say that she has been a part of that from the very beginning. So I'm, I feel very fortunate. Well, I, I know that authors very often think of their whole process as solitary and don't realize that networking and the, and the mentorship that comes from communicating together. Um, you you wrote some books about Comfort, Texas. Comfort, Texas, it's a great name. It's so central to the plot of your novels. Why did you choose that specifically? Well, I uh, spent a lot of time in Comfort, Texas uh, when my husband was stationed at, at San, San Antonio at Fort Sam and our children were quite young. And I would do a lot of driving out into the hill country uh, just to explore. And I stumbled on the very real town of Comfort, Texas. It's off of um, I-10 a little bit farther west from Bernie. And it's one of those uh, sister, sister towns in the Hill Country. There's Fredericksburg, Kerrville, and Comfort. And for reasons that are, are quite complex, uh, Comfort 
resisted all of the efforts uh, to redevelop and redefine themselves as a tourist destination and, and, and delighted in being the crusty, undiscovered, uh, raw community uh, that they've been <laughs> from the very beginning, yeah. And it's really distinctive to their uh, culture, their history, and their story of how they started. And I kept getting drawn back to that. I, I, there was something so independent about that spirit that could resist um, all these modern, um, you know, uh, desires to improve and be chic and all these things. And uh, I, I find myself drawn to telling stories of, about women who discover their own personal grit through circumstances and obstacles. And that's, I feel like, why comfort is the ideal setting for some of these stories, because comfort has discovered their grit. And they delight in their grit. Um, and they're not ashamed of it. And um, I think you know, I think we're so used to assuming that communities need to be progressive and, and uh, technologically advanced and offering the latest and greatest. But there is a distinct value in the simplicity of knowing yourself and knowing uh, your values and uh, honoring that. So I, I, uh, I love that comfort still pretty much looks the same as it did probably, you know, 40 years ago. And that's okay with me. I, I like setting stories there are very modern uh, women finding their uh, purpose in life in a town that knows its purpose. I, I know that your books are Comfort Plains, no, Comfort Plans, excuse me. You won the Texas Author 2018 Best Historical Romance. I did. Comfort Songs, and Comfort and then, Songs rolled out in October, and I'm sure it's on somebody's list for an award. And I know you have one that you're in the works with now called Comfort Foods mm -hmm. and be working on that as a new contemporary movement through. Um, and I can't wait to share all the details of that. So we're going to step away for just a moment for a sponsor break and we'll be right back. The fifth annual Authors Marketing event is coming to Granbury, Texas, July 24th through the 27th. Join us and learn from the professionals how to properly market and sell yourself and your books. Go to ame.authorsmarketingguild.com for all the details. That's ame.authorsmarketingguild.com. I'm Rox Berkey. And I'm Charles Brakefield. We're award-winning co-authors, Brakefield and Berkey, of the Enigma book series. There are 10 books in these series, with book number 11 planned for release in January 2020. Each story has a central technology focus ranging from identity theft to cryptocurrency and now AI wars. These adult techno thrillers pit cyber good guys against cyber thugs across the dark net. In our world, technology is today's weapon of choice. You can enjoy ebook format, paper, or audible. We want your feedback. Until the next story, thank you. Thanks. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area, available to write and record a 30-second commercial, much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me, and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas, and in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1900. Four, two. Join award-winning author Ari Brish presenting his book Lay an Egg and Make Chicken Soup at the Lone Star Festival, a Texas-sized event at the Event Complex in Seguin, Texas on May 30th, 2020. Check out the lineup of authors, artists, and bands at lonestar.bookfestival.network sponsored by Authors Marketing Guild, City of Seguin, Texas, Dear Texas, IndieLector.store, and HEB. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. <laughs> we are so glad to be back. Um, we want to continue our conversation with, with Kimberly. Uh, some, I mentioned before she came, before we broke for sponsors, that she had her book set in Comfort, Texas, and that uh, she was progressing even into the third novel in that series. And so what I wanna talk about is those books specifically, do the characters from one of the novels 
kind of bleed over into or weave into uh, the next novel? Are the characters throughout is what I'm asking. Well, I'm really glad you asked that question um, because it's important. And uh, I love how my friends all network together and they pop up in various places. And so I've duplicated that in my novels. Um, so the very first story that I wrote that's set in Comfort, Texas, um, was a small novella. And it's the story of two people uh, who come back later in life to reconnect and uh, you know, try to pursue um, whether or not they have a chance at a romantic relationship um, with all the years and, that have passed in between. And so that novella was really what kicked off this whole um, journey into writing with the setting of Comfort Texas. And I offer that novella free to everyone who subscribes to my newsletter at KimberlyFish.com just as a free gift because I want to introduce them to this town of comfort and the characters and the style of writing that. Um, that I enjoy. And then I have the full length novel Comfort Plans, which uh, as you mentioned, came out a couple of years ago. And that's a, a different cast of characters, um, but I'm building that sense of community in comfort. And so what's interesting about the novel Comfort Plans is it's very much, um, I, I like to tell people who enjoy HGTV and all the fixer upper type shows, they're gonna love this novel because it takes one of those iconic German farmhouses that we're so familiar with from the hill country and does a complete renovation. You know, one of those things is if money was no object, uh, what would you do? Well, thankfully my characters have an opportunity to do that. And in the course of that uh, renovation to this old German house, they uncover um, some letters that have been hidden. And uh, so the process of renovation, the characters don't understand the, the letters, but the readers do. And so the readers are, are understanding some of those early settlers, the pioneers to comfort, uh, some of their background and their stories. And, I've, uh, and I'm grateful for that award from Texas Authors because I know that they were honoring that original story of pioneers um, as it was related in, to this very contemporary book. And, um, and, I, and I love connecting, you know, history to a modern reader. Um, it's just a powerful thing. But the, the fun part of finishing comfort plans and hearing all the positive responses from readers on that story, and I knew readers enjoyed the characters. So when I started writing comfort songs, another standalone book uh, set in comfort, I had the characters from comfort plans kind of walk through the pages a few times. And, um, you know, maintain a friendship and it doesn't matter if somebody has not read comfort songs or comfort plans or even the the novella that's free on my website each story is its own standalone book and um it's not dependent on knowing the first or the second it's just a secret pleasure for my readers that have read the first book or the novella to see those familiar characters come back and it's almost like a little easter egg of of fun for them because they'll remember what they had read in, in the previous books and, and like seeing the, the natural progression. And so in this new novel that I'm writing, Comfort Foods, um, I maintain that thread of connectivity with the, with the other characters. And though this will be an entirely standalone book of its own uh, with some pretty uh, dynamic characters that are, are gonna feel rather ripped from uh, headlines uh, that we're very familiar with, um, contrasting them to that to that very uh, raw and organic community of comfort will be lots of fun. And I think uh, shed a lot of light on these struggles that folks are going through. But then again, there'll be those friendly faces from those other books popping up. And um, so I enjoy that. You're, it's you're taken a wonderful little town and you have built a community and it sounds like the author can drop in and out. I mean, the reader can drop in and out from any time and be able to still know, have continuity, know where they are, read the last one. It makes them want to go back and see what was the first thing that happened in this town. I think it's an awesome idea uh, because it's such a way to display um, personality and plot line. It's amazing for, for an author to be able to do that. So it's really not necessary that they read the first one first, second one second. No. They can read them in any order because they are all standalone. Mm -hmm. With these four published books, do you as the author see any recurring patterns in your characters? Oh, I absolutely do. And I didn't know that until I finished the fourth novel. But I realized, um, because I write in this 
uh, with a female character as a lead character in all the books, even the, the World War II historicals, I discovered that the pattern that I had was in uh, taking women who are in a situation of conflict and, and uncertainty and questioning their own power to survive obstacles and showcasing them discovering their own tools and their own, their own ability to navigate and uh, find confidence and find their grit. Um, and so it was really with the, the completion of Comfort Songs and, and a lot of the reviews that were coming back about that book, talking about the, the power of a, a character discovering her own sense of place that I realized, hey, that's kind of the thing in all of my books. Um, I admit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, and I don't want to give the impression that, that the male characters have it all figured out. I mean, they don't either. They, I, I'm, I'm big into this whole discovery of what you're capable of doing. And, and particularly when the temperature is rising and the obstacles are growing and it looks uh, like um, there's no way over finding that way through that's a skill we all need to be reminded of that we're capable of, of, of doing. And, and I love that my characters, um, they make it through. Absolutely. Well, what do you desire that the reader take away besides what you just said for the time that they've invested in your novel and sitting down to read, uh, what do you want them to take away? You know, I would love for my readers to take away a sense of pleasure. Uh, I definitely uh, want them to feel um, the entertainment value, but more importantly, I, I want that feeling of this everyday vacation. And I use that term respectfully because we feel and as busy now, busier now. I don't know about you, Keith, though, but my children are grown, my house is empty, and I am busier now than I've ever been. <laughs> Nobody ever told me it was going to be like that. And I know I'm not alone. I know that readers all over this planet feel like technology has just wound them up tighter than a drum and they need to unplug. And you and I both know that there's almost nothing that gives more pleasure than unplugging with a good book. Paper in your hands or an e-reader, whatever the, the device is, but getting lost in a story for a couple of hours, a day, a weekend, it just kind of helps the brain unwind and refocus. And that sense of pleasure that comes from seeing um, a pleasant place, mm -hmm. uh, pleasant characters, mm -hmm. um, having a happy ending, that sort of resets my brain and I hope it resets yours and I think it resets with my readers. And so that everyday vacation, those 30 minutes, couple of hours, whatever people can grab with a book, that's what I'm striving to give the readers um, who spend some time with me. I, I totally understand. I'm an auto reader from age two and a speed reader. So I read voraciously. I read a novel a day and four newspapers and all the things I study for my clinic. And, and I understand the, the need to escape into a reality, to be able to travel while sitting still, <laughs> to be able to touch the future, touch the past. All of those are part of what I hear in your in your writing style is you're weaving a pattern or a tapestry, so to speak, in which they can step into it at any point and maintain that experiential knowledge that they're going to gain from it at the same time erasing everything that they're feeling and they feel overweighted with so they can climb into Comfort Texas or into wherever you set your plot to be. Yeah, that's exciting. And, and I think as a young authors, very often we don't know or understand that. And so we, a young author very often gets, they get lost on one aspect of the story without realizing that the story is the action and the people mm -hmm. and how they act and react to the story. And as a result, they find themselves, they, they get confused with, with what step to take next. <laughs> and to hear you, it's just a process of, of stepping easily from one point to another. Well, we're going to have to take another station break here, and we're going to talk to our sponsors, but we'll be right back. Thank you for watching or listening to Indie Beacon Radio. Our sponsor, IndieLector.Store, is the only bookstore that pays authors their fair share for book sales. Help authors to succeed and enjoy a great book by supporting them at IndieLector.Store.
Enjoy a 10% discount with coupon code SHOPPER20 at IndieLector.store. Coupon valid until December 31st, 2020. That's IndieLector.store, coupon code SHOPPER20. What would you do if you had to put your life on hold to care for a loved one? I'm Charlotte Canyon, award-winning author of the book, You Have to Laugh to Keep from Crying, How to Parent Your Parents. That was a question I had to ask myself some 16 years ago, and you'll have to ask the same question. I had a father-in-law with dementia, a mother with Alzheimer's, and a dad with Parkinson, all at the same time. We Fiction is a fun, fast pass writing contest for any author team to create a book based on what readers submit for plot, characters, locations, and even plot twists. Learn more about this unique contest at wefiction.dearindy.org. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at authorsmarketingguild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's authorsmarketingguild.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Uh, welcome back. It's good to be back to talk with Kimberly about, about the, her books, about the direction she's taking with her life and the things that she's doing, and the advice she's giving to our new readers and to new, re new writers is very vital. And I think, that's what, I think that's what Indy wants to do. We want to support, direct, and encourage writers. One of the things I like to ask authors is, who are you reading now? Who are you reading? Oh, well, like you, I'm a voracious reader and am always uh, looking for a book to take with me and keep in my car and that sort of thing. I've just recently finished a novel that I absolutely devoured. Um, it's called Gentlemen in Moscow by Amar Tolls. And it's not a new book. It's been out for a while. It's just new to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Um, I loved so many elements of that story. Um, I, I would even hasten to say it's one of the more flawless books that I've read of recent years. Just the character development, the storyline, the plot, the history, uh, the crafting of um, you know well-chosen words and pacing, and then the environment that he created um, was just an utter delight. And um, I also have the privilege of uh, being associated with Kathy Murphy and the Pulp Word Queens. It's a book loving book club group um, that started out of Jefferson, Texas. And through her, I discovered several writers that I am currently reading. Uh, Anne Garvin, Patty Callahan, Henry, Lisa Wingate, who's been a writer that I've loved and, and read just about everything she's written. Uh, but she has a new book coming out. So I am, I'm always looking for those books. I haunt old books used bookstores. I've got good friends here in the East Texas area with independent bookstores, like the bookstore over in Kilgore and um, Gladewater Books in Gladewater. Then I just, um, I'm, always, I'm always on the hunt. But I have to tell you, in all honesty, I've recently been rereading Rosamund Pilcher. Mm -hmm. Now, she's an older author, been around forever. Um, well, maybe not forever, but I fell into her books the other day, uh, found them at a used bookstore, and rediscovered her. And I, I'm not going to tell you she's for everybody because it can be a little slow. You know, uh, she, she enjoys a beautiful narrative. But man, those stories stay with you. And when a writer can craft a character that lingers in your mind after you've turned that final page, that's a gifted writer. That's a gifted writer. Well, I want my listeners and, and, and viewers to be able to find you and mm -hmm. to reach out and not only purchase books and, and, and w walk through your webpage, <laughs> but I want them to be able to contact you because you are a public speaker as well. So would you tell us what's the best way to reach you and how do we subscribe to, re to get that free ebook? Yeah. Well, the easiest way to reach me is at KimberlyFish.com. 
And there on my website, I have um, a spot for readers to leave me their email address as to, to receive my incredibly sporadic newsletter. Uh, and when they do that, they'll be uh, invited to, to receive the ebook. It's complimentary, um, no strings attached. And um, one of the interesting things that I did recently is, is a thank you to those that subscribe to my newsletter. Mm -hmm. so I offered them at Christmas a bonus epilogue to comfort songs. Um, so many readers had enjoyed that novel and they'd sent me so many notes um, because they, I, I encourage people to email me directly uh, as well as communicate with me at my uh, Kimberly Fish author page on Facebook. And they so resonated with those characters that I just wanted to give them a gift. And so I wrote a small uh, bonus epilogue, uh, made it exclusive to the subscribers of my newsletter as a Christmas gift to them. And those that have read it have just been really, really sweet to say nice things about that. And um, so I, I enjoy uh, honoring and respecting those that take the time to subscribe to my newsletter. I have to be honest, I'm really on Instagram quite a bit. Um, I love the, the quick photo, just a few words at the bottom, just to kind of give folks a glimpse into the, the world that I get the privilege of leading and a lot of the volunteer activities that I'm involved in in my community. I mean, I'm on the board of the newly opened Longview Arboretum and Nature Center. And to be able to, to show the, the crazy balance that I maintain between volunteer activities, my freelance writing, my novel writing, and then of course um, my home life. It's, it's kind of fun to be able to share that. So a quick picture to Instagram is generally the way um, I like to, to keep people uh, informed. And that's, you can find me there at fish underscore writer uh, on Instagram, but my Facebook page, Kimberly fish comma author is um, a, a fun and active group. And we, we share all sorts of interesting tidbits there, but I do enjoy communicating with um, readers and um, I, I leave a blog on my website occasionally in case anybody really wants to go in and know more of what's going on in this noggin. Um, but I, I, I respect a reader's time and I try not to, to overwhelm them with too much. Well, I appreciate you sharing information so that we can make that contact and I want to encourage my listeners to seek you out and, and, and to find this new journey, this new place of discovery and comfort, uh, as well as your other books. I think that reading the historical uh, journeys that, about the pipeline would be terribly fascinating, and I think that we should share that information too. So I want you to, to, to know that I appreciate your time and your energy and your excitement and I challenge everyone out there that's a writer to start now. This is the day you, do, you begin. And everybody that's a reader, find a new volume and begin again every day. Because that's how we communicate. That's how we build community. So thank you very much, Kimberly. It's been an honor. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with hostess Dr. Keitha Story Stevenson. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by Beyond Bourgeois for Authors Mark and Guild LLC, copyright 2020. Voiceover by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and B. Allen Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com.